Welcome to the Mustang Message, a Dallas Center Grimes Community School District podcast. My name is Ann Wimhoff. I'm the Director of Communications and your host. Today on the podcast, I am joined by head boys basketball coach Joel Rankin. Coach Rankin and the Mustangs won the 3A boys state championship in March, and Coach Rankin owned, earned his 300th win. Congratulations to you and the Mustangs, and thanks for being on the show today. Well, thank you for having me. Uh, I appreciate it. So I want you to tell me about this historic season. So kind of walk me through and walk our listeners through this from start to finish. Well, it it was kind of a magical ride that um, obviously last year I really liked our team and I thought we had the pieces and kind of ran into uh, a team that uh, Davenport Assumption uh, that had a great player and he he kind of did a number on us a little bit, had 30-some points, and um, knew we were going to lose uh, some really good players, but also was excited about what we had coming back. And uh, They were great kids who loved basketball, and I think that's uh, the number one uh, ingredient was they loved basketball. They just wanted to play all the time, and, and they were going to get better and um, ended up, uh, you know, do, doing a lot of things in the off season. And I knew that that we were going to be pretty good. Um, and, and then uh, J- Jacob Runyon ended up making a switch and, and, came, and came to uh, DCG. Yeah, um, that's right. From Johnston, and he he kind of uh, was kind of the, the the missing piece. I think we we're going to be really good, but uh, Jacob is such a incredible player and and, and kid that. Uh, he just kind of was that missing ingredient, I think. Um, so we we ended up, uh, you know, starting in, in November, and it seems so long ago. But uh, <laughs> you know, I I, I felt that uh, September and August we were playing once a week every every Sunday, and and we had a lot of kids who were doing that. So that when you hit the start of the year, uh, the mechanics are already in place, yeah, right, and they're ready yeah, to fire away. Yes, and. Some of the teams we were playing had a lot of, you know, f- football guys, so they were not, I don't think, in basketball shape yet. So early on, <laughs> we had a lot of success. And um, I, I guess beating um, Indianola uh, was a great win for us because they, we knew they were going to be really good. And uh, that was kind of a, a game against a 4A school. Um, let, got us to 3-0 in the conference before uh, our break. Yeah, and then we played Johnston, which is, you know, first time we've ever played Johnston, um, and it was at at their place. Uh, it's kind of a test for us, and we were failing the test pretty badly until the fourth quarter, and and then we just and what happened? Can you explain what happened in that fourth quarter when when they made that you know change? Well, I, I think that we started making shots, and um, <laughs> that always helps. And the momentum's a crazy thing, you know you. National championship have one, one half where North Carolina looked unbeatable, and then the next half, uh, Kansas came out and right. um, so basketball crazy game that way. And the fourth quarter, it just seemed like everything went our way. We had the momentum, the energy, and uh, ended up tying it late. Went to overtime, lost by two. But uh, you know, at Johnston, they were at the time ranked second in four A, and and then. I knew that they went to state championship the year before. Um, you know, J- Jacob coming back, there was a lot of emotions. Um, he handled it great, and, and Johnston handled it great, and he played great. Uh, but going into break, it was a loss, and you, and you don't want to ever uh, go into break with a loss. But that was uh, – it gave us a lot of confidence. It was it was a, a loss that we learned that, hey, we can compete with anyone. and. And so after break, uh, had some really tough games with Pella Christian and, and Pella. Love the way we played against Pella Christian at their place because they're 6'9", 6'10", and, and we have 6'5", 6'6", 6'3". You know, we're not as, as big, but we really battled. And uh, remember, an alley-oop dunk to Cole kind of got us going at Pella Christian. And then, and then Pella was kind of probably the favorite to win conference, and they came in and got us. Um, 
but we still were tied for the, the conference lead. Uh, ended up going to Norwalk, playing four overtimes with Norwalk, which right? was uh, definitely Wild. definitely hard on the heart as a, as a coach. But the kids got it done, you know, and that's one thing about the, the, this group is they're resilient and they were uh, never out, you know. Things didn't go well, they didn't pout, you know, um, and just stayed with it. And, and then, uh, you know, we had some great games. We had some games we struggled, but probably the low point of the season, which is, if I look back at it now, if we didn't have this low point, I don't think we, we win the state championship. Is We just played so poorly. Got to give Indian all the credit. They beat us by 30, and they, we didn't look like we did, belonged in the gym with them. They were quicker, faster, stronger. Um, and, then, and then we ended up playing Boone on, on the next Saturday. Ended up losing to Boone, um, and Boone started playing really good there. But they were struggling a little bit at the at the time, so it was a soul searching weekend, um, you know, because we had a lot of goals in front of us still. Uh, you know, my assistant coach Lauk was watching, and and I asked Coach Lauk, "Will you come talk to these guys?" You know, and, and I remember he came and um, kind of said, "Hey, everything's in front of you. You just." You can't pout. You can't, you, you know, feel sorry for yourselves. But you're still leading the conference. You're, you still have a chance to go to state. And and then from there, we just started playing better. But I think it's because we prepared very well. We watch a lot of film. Uh, kids see themselves. You can tell kids they're not blocking out or they're not doing this or doing that. And, and it kind of goes over their heads a little bit. They don't really think they're doing it sometimes, but when you watch a <laughs> film, it can be humbling, and some kids will take that and get defensive, and this this group loved it. I mean, I don't think they loved it. <laughs> they loved it, but they took they it to heart. They learned from it. And they learned from it. And I've never had a team improve so much after watching film and making some changes. And, and, and as coaches, we made a lot of changes at practice. We, we didn't, I don't think we were really challenging this group Others, uh, other teams were getting better, and we were stagnant. We just weren't – our practices weren't hard enough. They were, were not competitive enough, and and we, we got a lot of ideas from the kids. We asked the kids, how can we be better because we weren't doing them justice. Um, and, and then these changes we made and, and the kids um, being so coachable and, and wanting to get better, uh, we ended up playing um, – Pella Christian again won by over 20 against a team that got fourth in state in 2A. I mean, played great. Jackson Jones hit seven threes, tied a school record. Uh, just, just, just were, were really on top of the conference still and, and still um, had all our goals in front of us. Then, then we went to Pella on the road, and that was kind of the highlight of the season because they, it was their senior night. Tough place to play. They won the state championship sure. last year. And really played great, came up with a win, really excited. But then we basically had to win our next two games to win the conference championship outright, outright by ourselves, which is a goal for us because that is a, a true testament of the long haul, the whole season, the grind. You have to be excellent throughout the year. And for we sure. played Norwalk, and the kids said, you know, we won't go overtime. They promised me. And, <laughs> <laughs> and they went three. We went three overtime. Right, and that's so yeah. crazy considering, like you just said earlier in the yeah. season, you had the four overtimes, and I mean, that mm-hmm. alone. And you know, there's a rivalry there. So oh, it was it was intense and it was stressful at times. But again, when things were down, when things didn't look like uh, we were going to come out on top, you know, someone different made a play. Still didn't think we were playing great. I still was excited about, whoa, if we start to all play at one time together, everyone playing really good, I thought we would be really tough to beat. It just was always one or two people not having the greatest game and then and then three or four playing pretty good. Um, played Newton at home, um, and that was for the conference championship outright. We knew yes. we had already tied and, and, and ended up beat, beating Newton in a tough game. And... Um, so it was it was awesome to win a conference championship. Um, ended up playing North Polk, and 
And I don't know what the deal was that game. It just we, we just kind of went backwards a little bit. Um, but yet we got in the film room again and said, this is why we lost. This is what we have to do. And and then we, we, I always talk about a horseshoe. It's a it's a good uh, Mustang kind of even Reference. you know um, ended up. I tell the kids, you know, you have a horseshoe. Every season has a low point, and you just want to be going up the back end of the horseshoe at the end. And and so we played Ballard, who was ranked sixth or fifth in the in the state at at, at Ballard, and got a big win. And that really gave us confidence going into the um, tournament play. Sure. So talk to me about the tournament play. I mean, you get there and, and you're in that first game. And I mean, there has to be some jitters with that. And then mm-hmm. let alone the history of this is the seventh time that you're in that, that well, spot. Even before we get to state, we, we, we still had to play three games to get there. And, and Seidel, this is a cool story because Seidel, we, we were losing in the first quarter. They're having one of their best years, and, and just we were not playing good. And, and then uh, Troy Peitzman, who didn't play all year, he was hurt. We put we put him in in the first, and he had 18 points. And oh, he, my gosh. He carried us. And then the next game was against a hot Nevada team, and, and we played really well and just was excited about how we are playing. Um, ended up getting to state with a, a, a Newton game where in the second half they only scored eight points, I think. And, and so – our defense was playing really well. I think Cole Glasgow had a great game to go to state. And, and so, yes, it was our seventh time um, getting to state. And it, it, it's tough to go to state. It's really tough. And so we're proud, we were proud of going to state for, you know, six times. But yet there's always that. Um, Can we get over the hump? Get, get over the hump <laughs> deal and, and what's going on and why can't we get it done. And, and uh, I don't have the reasons why. I, I I don't think we did anything different this year um, other than we took a lot of time to talk about uh, our like emotions, the uh, more of the mental than necessarily the physical. We talked a lot about uh, not fearing failure, go play to win. You cannot tense up you got to just go out there and 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 have fun it it was finding that love again for basketball yeah and the joy and being in the moment you got to be in the moment you can't um you can't look back at the mistakes you made because you can't you can't go in time you can't do anything about those but yet you can't look too far ahead so it's just everything is the next play in the moment um i know coach jones does a lot of that with the girls and and uh he came and he talked about how we treat one another when we're on the court like not getting frustrated with each other um and 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 really people get down when they don't make shots but he says you know if you shoot eight shots that's 20 seconds of the game that you're playing a lot more in 20 seconds but that impacts your whole rest of the game where most of the stuff you're doing doesn't involve a ball rebounding playing defense uh, setting screens, so don't let that 16 to eight, 20 seconds uh, dictate the dictate game. Everything else, um, and the kids That's really great advice. Yeah, re- really bought into that, um, and I think I tried to really uh, show them that I was poised and calm, you know. And in the past, when we went to state, I might get upset or frustrated, and you know, they they need to have that calming presence with the coach and the coaching staff did a great job of that too but more than anything it was the guys were really um committed to winning that first game at state so not only was that first game that win right get got you over the hump but that was also that game against carol was also your 300th win right yes if you ask coach lauk it was 299 because <laughs> I was I was gone for a game and he took it and won, but but uh, I told him I, I'm I'm still get we still get credit. It's it's a it was our 300th win as a coaching staff for the last That's 20 awesome. years. So it was definitely not just me because there's so many people that were part of uh, 300 wins and and a, and a ton of losses that we won't get into right now. But um, but I I tell you uh, I do think the kids kind of thought you know what we're going to get this 300th win and we're also going to get a win at state. Carroll was a great team. We played them earlier in the year and uh, 
I, I just felt we didn't play our best game. And maybe they didn't either. I don't know. But we, we won in, in overtime by three. And I just thought we would play better. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and we really played well. Took them out of some things, I thought. And, and really did a, a nice job against a really good Carroll team. And and so then we're in the semifinals. And, um, and then there, yeah, and we played winter set, which, you know, there was a lot going on at that time that their community had just suffered right. a loss with the, the tornadoes and everything going on. And it felt like, you know, Iowa was behind winter set. Mm-hmm. And we go into that game and, and talk to me about that mindset. Well, that... I was concerned because uh, we had two two great, really great players that we had, Bo Houston and mm-hmm. Cole Glasgow, were hurt in the game. And hurt pretty badly and and so i i didn't think they'd be able to play it was um, a tuesday thursday and uh i tell you jared tory did an awesome job i call him the mvp because uh they were ready to go once they hit the court it didn't even seem like anything was bothering them and 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 for those that don't know jared tory is our um athletic yes. trainer um th- through the district and works with all of right. our sports teams and does a great job yes, great does. job and and you know it, it was tough because we all felt for their community and and we we really uh, just uh we were hurting for them and now we got to play them and 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 we can't apologize for wanting to beat you know to beat them because it's our goals too and and uh so, you know, ended up, it was definitely a tough situation for everybody. Um, but uh, ended up getting it done with a great second half. Uh, just remember our second half just just playing so well, kind of uh, looking up and thinking, we. I think, you know, we got this. I couldn't believe it. And I, you know, would tell the guys, I, we're going to state championship, which is <laughs> something we've never done before. And... Um, we never even won a game, and now we're in the state championship, and it was it was kind of surreal and exciting. Um, and, and you have one more game, and you have 24 hours to prepare. And about the final game, you know, it, it was that it was a close game. It was an exciting game to watch. Mm-hmm. A little bit, he kind of gave me heart attacks on yeah. and on right. the game. I, so, you know that those last that last shot off by the six nine. You know, yeah. their Central DeWitt's player. Um, you know, what were your what's what was going through your head? Well, in the in the fourth quarter, they had the momentum. We had a great lead, and we kind of I, I probably did some things that didn't help us. With the kids don't know should I should I go ahead and be aggressive up twelve? Should I let them come out and then attack? And we missed some layups. We were nervous, I think, and. and Jackson Jones missed a couple free throws and he he's only missed one all year, you know, so it seemed like, oh my gosh, this might not be meant to be. I was, I was thinking, man, but I tell you, uh, this goes to resiliency again. Our kids never batted an eye. They, they just made some great plays at the end. Um, and so we ended up uh, getting a block and it's out of bounds and Cole got a steal and got it to Jacob. And Jacob wasn't going to miss some free throws because Jacob had such a great night. Uh, at 11.30 in the morning, we had a practice that ended, and everybody went home, and he shot for three hours. Oh, my know. gosh. And he's such a hard worker. And and so we had a timeout, and then Jacob made those two free throws, so we're up three. And we're talking to, as a coaching staff. And one thing we like to do is is put Calix, who is kind of long and lanky, on the ball. But then I, at the last second, I thought mm, they're they're probably going to go to um, Sean Gilbert, who had a great game, was hitting threes. And so, uh, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking maybe we should have like had him go back and be in front of Sean, someone behind him, because I didn't want him to turn and make another three. And it was too late because we didn't have any timeouts <laughs> left. So. I just said, come what may, you know, and, and they did get it to him. And he, I think there wasn't enough time for him to really turn and get a great shot. So I was kind of at an angle so I could see right when he shot it, it was way to the left. And it was it was probably one of the best feelings I've ever had. Um, you knew then in that yeah, moment, like, I knew, I knew that we that we won it. And, and, and then just seeing the community and the kids be so happy, that that was just a joy to uh, to just watch them celebrate. And it really all year these kids they they were so much fun and and uh, we would dance and we would do stuff in the locker room and 
um, everybody. What was that like post? I mean, so, you know, you're celebrating out on the court and then you get back. What do you say to your team when you're back in the locker room? Oh, uh, more than anything, it was just just having fun. And, and we, we got some young coaches that would get in the middle and dance. And then we tried to get Jacob Runyon to dance and he didn't really, <laughs> he did for the first time ever all year. You know, you have to win a state championship to get him to dance. But <laughs> Austin Penton got in there and, and everybody took turns like doing a little, uh, what do they call it? The, there's a dance now, the the gritty or something. Oh. I don't know what they're doing. but um, and, and then you're just like, you're just, it's just a big whirlwind. I can't even remember what I said, really. But but just how proud I was of them because they they could have uh, threw, you know thrown in the towel, being up twelve and then losing the lead. But they kept making plays at the end. I mean, we we were not the bigger team, but we you know we had a lot of heart and um, felt bad for 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 Sean Gilbert and, and Central Dewitt too because they played great and he played great. He had a great year, but um, just just. Uh, surreal the locker room and then getting the trophy and everything and then going on the bus and then the pep rally yes the uh, welcome back rally the be- welcome back r- rally was put on by uh you know mr butcher and, and madison in the community and, and got to cut up, cut down the nets and and mr grimes was there and it was awesome um and, and then it's 24 hours of just people being so kind and uh, saying how happy they are from you and i think there were there's people legitimately would watch and felt like hey the, you've been there six times it was kind of people knew that we were there it was six your times time. yeah it was, it was our, time. our time it was our time it was kind of meant to be and um and, and so people were really really happy for us as a program and and as a you know coaching staff and as the kids you know well and you got a big honor post this you were named the the class 3a coach of the year so how how did that feel after you know you've been coaching for this time and you you finally got the big championship win what does that mean to you oh it was it was special um you know it 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 just means we had great players uh this year and when you when you have I, i tell the kids this too you know when you have success and you do it in the right way, and you're humble about it. Um, you know, I, I would tell, you know, some some kids that could probably score 20, 25 points. I'd say, if you sacrifice for the team and do things the right way, and we're successful, you, you will get recognized mm-hmm. um, yes. more than if you trying to, you know, be selfish or trying to do too much, trying to score twenty five points on an average team. That's you're not, those things will come. And, and so it, it was a group award, definitely a coaching staff uh, award, a program award, a community award, and just everybody, uh, it, it was r- really cool to get. My friend showed me it and said, you're coach of the year. And, and I said that, that that was very humbling and, and, and I was very blessed to, to receive that. But uh, it definitely was such that I wouldn't have been possible without the kids, you know, playing so well, you know, and, and playing well at the right time. We just peaked at the right time. Jake Lewis with his lifting program peaked at the right time. You know, I said Jared Torrey, sure. um, Tim Lauk with the speech, you know, uh, Eric Rash, Patrick O'Connell, uh, Coach Jewell. It was a group award, so it, it was neat, though. So what would you tell, you know, the upcoming Mustangs? I mean, you know, your JV are watching your freshman teams, but those those kids that are in middle school and, and at Oakview, what do you tell those kids? That- well, I, I would tell them, first of all, when they had the trophy, when, when they got the trophy, it was the lights were on. I, I always say you, you get to have great moments and your dreams can come true when the lights are on, if you're willing to put forth the work when the lights are off. Like the th- countless shots that Jerry, that uh, Jackson Jones shot in the off season. And, uh, we, you know, no one realizes that Jacob Runyon's there some nights till 1030 and the coaching staff is with them. You know, kids sometimes want the fun, the glory, but they're not willing to sacrifice and put in the time. And um, so, so you can definitely have that that moment it's just you have to sacrifice Kobe Bryant was a great player but people don't know he got up at 4 30 every morning you know you can't just show up you got to work um that's what I would say that 
you, you should look at it as, as something that you want to get to too, but you got to understand it, it was a lot of blood, sweat, and tears to, to get to that point. And uh, it's going to be even, you know, tougher with 4A. We're, we're growing. Yeah. Um, so there are, has been some reclassifications moving forward mm-hmm. for next year. How, how, how do you think that's going to shake out? Well, I know that we're, we're expecting to be 4A. I was before, before now, so I wasn't necessarily surprised. Um, but then it kind of hits you like, well, are we ready? You know, are we? Uh, then, then you're kind of excited to say, okay, let's see if we can make memories and do do uh, so get some of these uh, goals done, playing against the top the top dogs. And we, you know, we play them in the summer, the, the top schools, and it's you know, it, it's not uh, always fun. So, you know, sometimes we get beat down, but we we play the Johnstons. and, yes, and, and we we're had playing, that, those games right. on the schedule already. And yeah, and. and you know, I think uh, our activities department and, and Mr. Butcher has prepared us, and uh, we definitely need to embrace the challenge. And that's what we would tell the guys: is it's fun playing against the be- the best. You know, and and we play in a conference where a lot of the schools already are for a Norwalk and Indianola, and um, our non-conference schedule. You know, we picked up Ankeny, and um, we got Valley wanting to play us in, in some other schools. So. Um, you're definitely, you definitely got to stay hungry. And um, I know some of the kids will 4A and I got to look at it as uh, that's a great challenge. You know, it's it's fun to bring a program into um, the next level. So we're excited about it. Well, Coach, thank you for yeah. being on the show today. Congratulations again to you, your coaching staff and, and the entire team. Thank you very much for your coverage and, and everything that, that you've done for the program and for DCG, and you do a great job. And oh, thank appreciate you. Appreciate you having me. Thank you. All right.